talk about cloud, there are so many definitions that it, it, it becomes you know, a, a separate session just on definitions. But um, from the big model perspective, there's certainly public clouds, which are open to uh, multiple users, um, really internet-based connectivity, the private clouds, which are dedicated to a, an organization. And then um, what's really happening, particularly for larger enterprises, is something that's more of a hybrid model, where you have both public and private. So with that being said, I think um, there's really kind of a perfect storm happening here, where we've got um, you know, kind of four different things. There's content, um, you know, storing, accessing, and transmitting. We've got um, devices. Um, you know, if anybody in this room has less than three or four devices that they use to access things, I'd be surprised. Um, so there's a proliferation of that. There's the um, ubiquity of, you know, wanting to connect from anywhere. It used to be you could be on a plane or a train or a car and you didn't talk to anybody, but that's obviously changed. And, um, and finally is the expectation, the expectation that you're going to get, um, you know, connectivity immediately and to anywhere and you really don't care where that content is. So we're, you know, interesting, the, um, discussion right before about latency and about uh, performance. And as I say, we, you know, we all strive for what I call Jack Bauer time. If you watch 24, you know, Jack would take the thing and all of a sudden download the entire Library of Congress, you know, immediately. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of where, where things are, are heading, at least in expectation. So um, certainly we've got a lot to talk about in terms of solutions. So really this cloud discussion is really about solutions. That's the, that's the bottom line and um, how these um, solutions um, for cloud services can be profitable and useful. And um, the issues that we want to talk about, certainly connectivity, scalability, reliability, um, uh, resiliency, and performance. So I think the, um, the opening, and we'll start because Hunter, I know, has, has a lot to say about this, is. What is, uh, <laughs> what is the um, kind of the, the major challenge, or what do you believe is some of the, uh, you know, some of the important things that are necessary for this infrastructure that has to really accomplish all of those types of things? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. So, um, and thanks for that introduction. I'm, I'm a stickler about definitions. So that's a good baseline for everybody in the room and, and all of us to, uh, to stick by. And I just wanted to say thanks to Jamie and everybody for putting telecom exchange together again. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Um, I think the, the threshold issue really is everything that you just described. Fundamentally, it is awareness. And then it's awareness of the fact that it's complex and it can't be oversimplified by just saying a word cloud mm -hmm. because it's just too convenient to gloss over the nuts and bolts and the hard mm -hmm. stuff. <clears throat> then it becomes a process of um, education, learning, what's behind what you just said. And then ultimately, um, the sort of the final equation is in order to build infrastructure, um, you have to have really two things. Uh, a plan, <laughs> plans help. Um, and then at the physical layer, um, it really all comes down to um, land rights, rights of way. So ownership of, for example, buildings, in a data center or a carry hotel environment. And then uh, ownership or control of through um, rights of way agreements for the rights of way. That's primarily where the fiber gets built. And there are a few different flavors of rights of way, um, country by country, uh, state by state. Um, but for the most part, there's rail, there's utility, uh, and then there's federal. Um, in some certain local areas, there's you know public water and things like that that you can also use, but there isn't like a national sewer system, um, at least not here. Um, and so, uh, fundamentally, those are the biggest issues, and that's you know what we've learned from looking at the past, uh, you know, a century um, or more actually, if you go back to in the U.S. Western Union and how they got started and everything else, uh, the telegraph. Um, but even to this day, and even as recently as last week when President Obama signed uh, an executive order 
to integrate multiple federal agencies into essentially one to streamline the application process for access to federal road rights of way. Um, it's an initiative. It's very challenging to integrate the, the bureaucratic nightmare of any government, particularly ours. Um, but it's the right intention because um, I think what his statement was um, relative to why the executive order was signed was we can't wait. And I find that to be a very curious statement. We can't wait, meaning he's implying that we're waiting for something, which means we don't have it, and we're waiting, which means we need it. And what he's referring to specifically was broadband infrastructure, which is really a euphemism for fiber. And we've reached the point where there needs to be uh, a new investment in fiber um, at 100 cents on the dollar. And um, that requires rights of way, federal road rights of way. Um, similarly, Mayor Bloomberg had an announcement uh, last week with five initiatives for city of New York. Uh, Connect NYC was one, and there's, there's several. And fundamentally, what that all gets down to is the biggest challenge here in New York City is landlords. The city's the city, but the landlords own the buildings, and they own the rights to get in and out of the buildings. Now, we in the carrier community have dealt with um, you know, the likes of uh, 60 Hudson Street and other famous, wonderful places for a long time. They have been dealt with, um, but now it's the actual office buildings and how do you get fiber into them and the carriers are basically being stopped at the door where it costs a lot of money to get in and it's very difficult for even metro network operators to deal with every single building in Manhattan because there's so many of them and it's a very costly and very time consuming process. So the real crux of what Mayor Bloomberg is putting forward is to try and flat flatten out that whole process so that fiber can flow freely in through you know the streets through ECS Empire City subway in and out of the buildings so those are really the the baseline infrastructure level issues that need to be aware of educated learned about and addressed before we can begin to put the infrastructure in place to grow what is commonly referred to now as the cloud the cloud, the cloud. okay uh, thank you, Hunter. And um, so that kind of is a good segue, Tim, into um, the buildings, right? The yes, data centers. So um, you can share with us what your, your perspective is. Yeah, I, uh, thank you, Jamie, for having me here. And thank you once, as Hunter said, Telecom Exchange is uh, more than I thought it could be. It's a beautiful thing, so thank you. I'd like to uh, just piggyback off what Hunter said. I think for the cloud, the biggest problem is the infrastructure which is kind of outside of my world because I am kind of the building, you know, a neutral co-location interconnect room where either the cloud provider or the cloud end user would be in my facility. And Hunter hit on some very strong points because sometimes you can start a great business in a building and the landlord don't know anything about what you're doing and then he hears all these acronyms like cloud and all they see is dollar signs, I like to think. And all of a sudden your landlord's your worst enemy and then that is hard for you know such as these gentlemen the carriers to come into the room and now with the bad economy there's just a lot of money it's not flowing so i think the biggest challenge just to come off what hunter said was was to get the infrastructure in the ground which the initiative by obama on the executive order is going to help that because it's if you all ever dealt with going through two jurisdictions it's a, it's a permitting nightmare the guys are kind of like we'll get to you next month when your when your application comes up and then six months later you hadn't heard anything so that's going to help to get the fiber from point a to point b and then we've got carriers to get into the building that's a threshold and then once you're in the data center i feel like that's kind of the easiest part because uh, i've already have the infrastructure and several companies like me have the infrastructure we're ready for it but I think the big challenge about cloud is, is actually getting it from point A to point B from the cloud provider to the end user. Okay. Thank you. And uh, that probably ties right in, Ian, to, your, <laughs> to what, uh, you know, your solutions it, it, are. It does. Um, again, thank you, Jamie, for the, the time and the invitation. Um, you know, our, our sort of foray into the cloud is actually hosting, together with Cisco, their UC products into the cloud to enable their VAR channel to actually sell to end users. And I think, you know, Tim's kind of led right into the point that I want to make, which is 
the cloud is this kind of concept that, that everybody talks about, but the reality of it is that you've still got to do an end-to-end -end service delivery. So our challenge is actually, because we are providing an end-to-end -end service right to the premise, is actually stringing all of that together and addressing, you know, which is, is a little bit of a motherhood and apple pie kind of fundamental, but when you get down to the end users, the resistance to moving to the cloud comes around, is my service going to be available? And is it going to be secure? And to actually provide the assurance around those two metrics, you have to go and put the whole thing together from the prem right back to, in our case, the data centers where we have the policy environment associated with the UC service. And that is, is the combination of a whole lot of things. It's, it's Hunter's challenge of kind of getting the basic fiber in the ground but it's really taking it and putting it up at a, at a service level. And there's a, there's a transport solution you have to provide. We have an EtherCloud product that Jamie talked about, which helps us with that. And oftentimes, the fact that you get a one-stop solution with transport connectivity to the prem all the way back to the cloud uh, is, is actually a, a significant differentiator allowing success. But it really is bringing it all together. You, you, you're taking, in the case of the UC world, you're taking something that was largely contained within a customer's prem. You could open the doors of the closet. You could see the lights flashing. You're distributing that across you know, a geography or geographies. And then at the end of the day, for the cloud to be successful for those kind of products and services which are intrinsic to a business's success, you've got to string it together. So our challenge is actually meeting those availability criteria across all of those fabrics to connect from desktop to policy. And as, in, in addition to that, wrapping the security like you say, you see 16, the Cloud Security Alliance type, type <coughs> certifications that an organization needs to be able to provide the assurance around Cisco. That's a key part of the infrastructure. It's not hard infrastructure, it's soft infrastructure that a company's got to have in order to be successful to really transition service to the cloud. So mm -hmm. more, our perspective is more of a private or semi-private cloud solution for, in terms of your yeah. definition. Um, clearly, the public cloud is, is a little different to that, but, but from the point of view of a private or semi-private cloud service, there's a lot of pieces that have to come together. Mm -hmm. Right, and you'd say in that case, the, the security is a is a major consideration. So security is key. I mean, you know, one of our one of our propositions in, in selling UC in the cloud is that we provide increased availability. Now, you can do all kinds of things at the network layer to kind of make sure that you can live up to that promise. You can have diverse deployment policy. In our case, we put it in two different data centers as well. You can take care of availability, but it actually costs money which is interesting in itself because when you put all that together, it starts to impact your, two, your true TCO comparison against prem versus cloud too. So there's some interesting challenges and there's some interesting resistance as a consequence of those challenges to services really moving into the cloud, which are intrinsic to a business. So. Great. Thank you, Ann. Um, and that moves right into well, I think what uh, Clint can share with us about data centers, about multiple data centers and uh, sure, other sure. types of challenges. You know, for us, uh, the, the challenge with the cloud is that the cloud's not equal. So, you know, you've got to boil it down to your main business point of driving revenue. And if you don't have a differentiator, you can't just fall back on this is the cloud and we're going to be part of that cloud. The ecosystem will not treat you all fairly. You've got to find out, for instance, when we're selecting a data center that we're going to build to, it, it, it's, uh, to some of Hunter's points, there's a lot of thought that goes in. There's a lot of dollars, a lot of cost, and I've got to make sure that that pays off. And there are a lot of data centers to choose from. So, you know, as, as we build out our infrastructure, we have to be very confident that that infrastructure is going to pay a return to us or, you know, we're, we're dead in the water. So for me, it's... Um, you know, the solutions that we have to get to are, do we feel like we add a differentiation point to the data center that we're connecting to? Do we bring it to the cloud in a way that allows those customers to use it different, that allows them to transition onto my services? And if we don't, what am I doing there? Um, so for instance, uh, we just did 
Ashburn uh, as a data center area. And you know, the, the differentiator that we tried to bring to the table was diversity up the Northeast Corridor, um, which wasn't there before. And you use that as um, can you or can you not make money in that area, and, and, and I would argue that it would have been hard for us not having that differentiator to to go give something new to Ashburn, which has been there for 10 years. And um, But we figured that out, and, and each of us has a piece of the puzzle that you have to figure out. Um, and the people that kind of think outside the box and the companies that do, I think those are the ones that tend to figure out how to make this cloud work. Um, and then obviously we've got to bring the latency so that it all works right and the application performance is there and you know essentially if, if I can add something to the table that makes two data centers on opposite sides of the country feel as if they're a virtual data center together combined as one, um, then I think I've accomplished what that company is looking for and what the end users are looking for. They can put their storage in a cheaper location, their backup, and their main servers in a higher price location like, like Manhattan. Um, so that's kind of how we, how we picture things at Sidera. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. And David, maybe that good segue for you to uh, discuss the bandwidth sure. issues. <clears throat> sure. Um, maybe I have a more controversial view. I think a lot of the basics are in place. Mm -hmm. um, for the cloud, um, you know, to me, kind of boiling it down to basics, it's, it's the IT, the CIO in the enterprise outsourcing what they used to do themselves a lot. Um, a lot of those uh, um, servers and applications, et cetera, you know, the easy decision was to take the applications and put them into a public cloud, um, connect it with IP, IP services, and, you know, it's not really security concerns or anything. Um, but as the macro economy puts more and more pressures on everyone's IT budgets, especially the large, uh, large uh, enterprises, um, those decisions to push out more of their critical um, kind of applications, uh, they need security, they need uh, dedicated dark fiber to, to their data centers, to their cloud, they need wavelength services, they need ethernet services. Um, and so I think we're starting to see, you know, over the course of the last couple of years, the cloud's gone, the connectivity to the cloud, has gone less from, uh, kind of a buzz term to oh, there's real life bandwidth and big bandwidth being uh, connected. Um, so I think the, the basics are there. I think the ability to look at um, and chat to that CIO and understand you know, what challenges they're facing, you're really putting together a connectivity solution for them. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't think anyone's the same. Um, you know, they have different locations and latency requirements and um, you know, uh, High, part hybrid, you know, part uh, dedicated. So it's really that solutions approach and being able to really understand your customers' needs. Um, but I think we think that the, you know, the opportunity is far, far, far outweigh the, the challenges here. Uh, the basics are there, the technology is there. You know, it's, it's about solutions and for us growing bandwidth at, at you know, 700 plus data centers. Mm -hmm. 